All right, let's look at our first sample circuit. In this case, I'm using four power MOSFET transistors. Two are P-channel, two are N-channel. This is the symbol I'm going to use. In this case, this is a symbol for a non-inverting tri-state switch, which I call simply a TRIS switch. It has a uh, data in and an enable pin. And we'll be referring to this truth table up here. Let's define a few terms. When I say hi out, what I've done is create a current path from VCC through Q0 through Q1 to the output. When I have a low, I've created a current path from the output through Q2 and Q3 to ground. High Z means there's no path either way, that there's no current path to VCC or ground. This is called high Z or floating. All right, first, let's say we're going to have the enable high. A high on the gate of Q3, an in-channel MOSFET, will turn Q3 on. A high into this inverter is going to be inverted to a low. So I'm going to have a low on the gate of Q0, a P-channel MOSFET. At this point, Q0 and Q3 are both turned on with a high on the enable. A high on DIN is going to be inverted to a low. A low is going to turn on Q1 and off Q2. So I have a current path now from VCC, Q0, and Q1 to the output. That's a high. Look over here at my table. DIN is high. Enable is high. Q1 and 0 are on. Q2 and 3 are off. I have a high output. Let's take DIN low. L the low is inverted to a high. The high will turn off Q1, it will turn on Q2, so now I have a current path from the output through Q2 and Q3 to ground. Referring once again to our truth table, a low on DIN, high on enable, Q0 and 1 are turned off, Q2 and 3 are turned on, and it's a low. Now let's take enable low. At this point, both Q3 and Q0 will be turned off. A low on enable, low on the gate of Q3. It's going to turn off Q3. The low is going to be converted to a high, a high on the gate of the P channel. Q0 is turned off. There is no path to either VCC or ground doesn't matter what DIN is at this point. There's no path to VCC or ground because of Q0 and Q3. This condition is called high impedance or high Z, as shown by this truth table. All right, let's move on. Now I have created an inverting TRIS switch. It works like the other except for one very important detail. I'm, on, I'm using no input inversion. Notice the bubble on the output. So that tells you whatever is the logic level on D when enabled is going to be opposite the output. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, let's make enable high again. Of course, that's going to turn on Q0 and Q3. A high in on DIN is going to turn off Q1 and turn on Q2, and thus it's going to go low. Again, if you look at here, a high in with enable high, Q0 and 1 are off, Q2 and 3 are on, the output's going to be low. If we make the input low, it's going to switch off Q2, it's going to switch on Q1, DIN low with the enable high, Q0 and 1 will turn on, Q2 and 3 will turn off, and I will get a high output. That creates a path through Q0 and Q1. Again, if I have a low on the enable, 
doesn't matter what the value on DN is going to be. There's no path to ground because Q0 and Q, there's no path to VCC. There's no path to ground because Q0 and Q3 are turned off. And thus it's high Z again. To finish this first circuit up, and this circuit will be used in all of them, if you don't have a prototyping setup like I have, you can quickly create some logic level inputs with a switch and a 2.2K resistor to ground. With the switch open, the, the uh, connection is low. With the switch closed, it will go high. Very simple setup. You can use this on any number of logic circuits. VCC has to be the same voltage level of whatever the logic you're using is. If you're using TTL logic, you'll have to use 5 volts. VCC here will also have to be 5 volts. If you're using 12 volts with CMOS components, such as a uh, CD4011 and so forth, you can use up to a VCC of 15 volts. So that ends this introduction. Thank you for listening. Um, more videos will be following this as we become produce more and more practical circuits with greater complexity and flexibility. Please click the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thank you.